An overland adventure through Southern Africa is on everyone's bucket list. And this year Nicole and I were lucky enough to be able to set 17 days aside for an adventure through Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, South Africa and Zambia. We'll be covering this trip in detail on a brand new series, but you may notice that my setup looks a little bit different. Yep, we've got some catching up to do. So let's rewind the clock and start at the beginning, shall we? Or rather, a few days before the beginning. Well, I've actually just arrived back from a trip to Sweden, and it's all systems go because in three days time, we're embarking on the biggest trip that we've ever gone on in this vehicle. I mean, we've been building up to this for a long time. We've done like sort of the West Coast series and Best of the West, which was about four or five days. Um, we've done the Drakensberg, which was six or seven days, but this is a big step up. So a lot of preparation has to go in it. And I thought I'd give you a sneak peek into what really goes into preparing for a trip like this. So we've started with sort of the basics. We've uh, taken the, the truck in for a, for a major service. We have uh, done wheel alignment and, and tire rotation and just checked a bunch of things on the, on the wheels. Um, we've cleaned on the outside and the inside, but there's a few modifications we're actually gonna be making uh, before this trip. We're going to be switching out the roof racks and the awning and the rooftop tent. So some major changes, uh, Easy Awn have come to the party and Easy Awn are one of the legends of, of overlanding, uh, not only in Africa, but globally. So I'm really excited to see what that stuff looks like. But in order to install that stuff, we've got to try and take all of this off. So that's my job for this morning. And once we've done that, we'll take everything in to get all the new stuff put on. And then we'll start actually packing the inside of the truck. And I'll go through the processes of sort of what goes through our minds when we pack, um, in what order we put stuff in, what our checklists look like, and then some of the safety stuff we prepare for, how we download our offline maps, how we connect the satellite phone. And it's going to be exciting. So stay tuned as we prepare for one of the best trips of our lives. With plenty of changes taking place on top of the Hilux, step one is to remove the existing roof racks and the quick pitch awning. And that requires climbing around like a monkey and loosening plenty of nuts. Tell you what, this is a rather bittersweet moment because all this stuff has served me quite well. And we've got a lot of memories attached to things, but that's what life's about, trying new things, um, moving forward, and I think that the stuff we're getting is for the most part going to be quite a big upgrade, especially when it comes to the rooftop tent. That's really going to be awesome. So this one comes off, it served us well, but it's time for it to go. Roof racks will come off and time for some big changes. The mounts that hold the awning in place are pretty robust with many nuts to loosen. They have to be with all this weight to hold up, but eventually we get it off. So there she is, the quick pitch awning is off. I'll tell you what, it's the first time I'm actually picking it up and it's pretty heavy. I think the one we're putting on is quite a bit lighter. It may not have the same area coverage that this one does, but it will be lighter. So as, al as always, there are trade-offs, but I think I'm going to like the new one a lot. It's one of those designs that I think will work very well. Next up, roof racks. Yo, this is going to be a mission to get all these little bits and pieces off here. So that's get a little bit loose there. I'll tell you what, this is not a job for people with big hands. But after putting my knees through a bit of torture, I managed to loosen the roof rack mounts. And at this point, we can slide it off. The roof looks so naked. It just doesn't look right. But it won't be naked for long. We're changing things up quite a bit. Um, the kind of configuration that we've been using up, up until now was roof rack in, in the front on top of the cab with a rooftop tent in the front and then a uh, roof rack at the back with just open space for whatever we need. Obviously that was where the, the awning mounted so we needed the roof rack just for the awning itself but we also used it for like storing firewood, uh, extra water for showering uh, and the recovery track, stuff like that. But the way we're going to do it now is we're going to be putting uh, load bars on here. I think two load bars. We're going to be putting the uh, Easy Awn blade rooftop tent on top of that. And that's a hard, hard shell rooftop tent, which means it's a bit longer. It'll, uh, it'll hang over the, the front a little bit as well. 
And then in the front, uh, the, although the rooftop overhangs, there is a bit of space in the front. So we'll be putting another um, Easy On Canine uh, rack in the front. And that, that space right in front of the rooftop tent, that's what we'll use for stuff like spare ammo boxes with firewood, maybe some water, or just whatever we need to put up there that can't fit in the back of the vehicle. So really excited to try this out, especially the rooftop tent. I think that's gonna be awesome. Um, it's just gonna make our life much easier, but I'll talk a bit more about that once we get it on here. Okay, ready, sir? Okay. Taking a roof rack off the cab of a truck is like shaving all the hair <laughs> off a young Dwayne Johnson. Everything is suddenly so aerodynamic and it dawns on you why your fuel economy has been suffering. <laughs> roof racks just add so much extra drag, but thankfully the canine racks should do a little bit better in this department as their profile is a little bit lower and the bars run front to back instead of side to side. Rule number one is don't lose your nuts and bolts. <laughs> We'll be needing these tie down points for the new racks and thankfully they use the same system with 8mm bolts that can simply slide in so it's a straight swap for these accessories. And while we wait for the Easy On stuff to be delivered there are plenty of other things to be done especially in the packing department. Now this all looks like chaos and it is I guess but we're about to change that. Um, these two drawer systems you see below me are the drawer systems that I've always had in my truck. And the great thing is that they are removable, which means that we can actually bring them inside and pack them with all our food stuff, um, non-perishable non foods and cooking stuff and everything that we need to access on a regular basis can go in there. The whole point of the drawer system is that if you need to access something very quickly, it's all there and you can kind of keep it organized, keep it in place and keep the center of gravity quite low. So the way we're doing this is that the stuff that we need to access uh, on, a, on the most regular basis will go here at uh, sort of the, the front side of the drawer and everything that we, we won't need that regularly like washing up stuff, etc., will go towards the back. So the things we'll probably need most are coffee stuff and spices because we're gonna use that every single day for cooking. This is something that I wanna show you. These are made by Camp Cover. They're canvas, they're sealable, and they just do a fantastic job of keeping everything organized. So sometimes I put these inside uh, those plastic ammo boxes, but in this case, I don't think that's necessary. There you go, we've got some snacks and stuff here too. Got a bit of a gap here in the side, so we'll put our tin foil, cling wrap. Camp Cover makes pretty much everything, like this is a cooker top cover, this is a pan cover, gas bottle cover, and these are gonna be coming, these are gonna come in very handy because we also need to access this gas pretty regularly, so that'll go there. I normally put the pans and cooker tops here, and then these gloves, which come in handy for picking up stuff that's hot, also used quite regularly, so you can fill the gaps with those. This stuff over here, uh, buckets for carrying water, this thing for doing some washing up. We're going to put this sort of towards the, the back end. I think right over here is a good spot. Bry grid and some washing up stuff. Dishwashing liquid, sponges, bry grid cleaner. I think this stuff can actually just go right there as well. So in here I've got all the other food we might need like lefto, um, sort of snacks, tomato paste, spare coffee, rice, kind of long life perishable, sorry, non-perishable foods. And as you can see, this ammo box slides, or rather the drawer system is made perfectly for these, so that'll probably go right there. Spare gas bottles for the cooker, it can go right there. And we've got some leftover space here for whatever we might need it, so looking good. Communication is extremely important and for this trip I've bought some two-way radios just so I can communicate with the other vehicle that's driving with us. We discovered some weaknesses with the setup but we'll discuss that during the series. For now we need to activate the satellite service for the Garmin Enrich Mini just in case we have an emergency. This is a pretty straightforward process of going to the Garmin Explore website, choosing the very basic safety plan, 
and activating the service. 249 Rand for a month of satellite use is a small price to pay for the peace of mind that this gives you. Now back to the packing. So one thing I've been uh, contemplating for quite a while is what to do with this space down here because the ammo boxes sit on this ammo box slide but there's probably around 10 centimeters of space below that which obviously we don't want to waste. Um, in the past I've done a couple things. First option is to put something like this, a shallow container down here which you can fill with little bits and pieces that you need. The other option is to use that space for something like this which is our sort of toilet setup over here with the you know just a little toilet seat on a stand um, I don't know how often we're gonna need this so I want it to be relatively accessible and anything down here is pretty hard to get you know to get stuff out you just take all the ammo boxes out to access this it's not what we want but that being said we're probably not gonna have a better place to put the toilet so I think we're gonna use the toilet put the toilet right down here if I could redo this entire build, there are probably a few things that I would change, but that's not the point of this video. Right now we are making the most of the configuration in front of us, and I think we did a pretty darn good job on this trip. There you go. Wow, that actually works quite well. I mean, I can probably put this right here. Ah, perfect. With that all packed up, this is what the other side looks like. So it turns out uh, we've actually, with those two ammo boxes in here, still got space for this guy, which we can just use as temporary storage for cameras or plates of food or whatever we want. And we finally got a chance to install the National Lunar Power Pack DC25, which replaces the old battery box and the old DC DC charger from National Lunar. The other DC DC charger that used to be in here is actually going into Jason's bucky that Jason's the guy who's driving with us so that'll still be in use but yeah just having all the ports here you know USB charging ports and everything plugged in here plus extra space up here and extra space at the back just makes life much easier. So we all know the fridge is going to go on this side and the fridge takes up a decent amount of space but what to do with this side has always been something that I've been unsure of. We're going to try something new on this trip. Normally we put the um, shower, the gas shower system and everything here, but it's likely that a lot of the places we stay at will have their own hot, hot water and some sort of shower system. So we're actually going to keep the shower in the, in, the, um, in the cab, somewhere at the bottom beneath our clothes and stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to load this stuff here, which is all the sort of spare bits and bobs in case we, have, we need uh, recovery or anything. Sort of the hard the hard to access stuff this is going to go right to the back uh, this is sort of spare gas bottles spare toilet rolls more stuff that we don't need to access often um, this is going to go down here this will go at the bottom here and on top of that this is going to be our washing up um, container so any dirty dishes can go in here it's sort of our you know procrastination box <laughs> any dirty dishes go in here and once we've got a lot of dirty dishes we can actually fill this with hot water and use this as our washing up bay so that goes right there and then trying something new in terms of waste management normally we hang a plastic packet over here let that fill up with garbage this is our solution it's a little bin with a biodegradable bag and it's kind of a easy spot there permanently when we need to fill it we open it up chuck stuff in and easy and now what you've all been waiting for, the first of our new goodies has arrived and we can unwrap some early Christmas presents. Nothing like a shiny new National Lunar Fridge to put a smile on your face. Well, you remember how my previous fridge had uh, failed me twice on very important trips? That's not going to happen again because we've just upgraded. This is a National Lunar uh, Smart uh, 60 litre dual compartment fridge and freezer. And I've also got some uh, lights from National Lunar as well that we're going to install a little bit later. But um, I'll do a full review of this at a later stage once I've got a, some chance to actually use it in the real world and, and actually uh, get to know it. But for now, let's put it in and install it and we'll chat about it later. What's nice about having a National Lunar battery box and fridge is that the fridge includes a Heliplug input which can easily be installed 
on the box as a replacement for another plug. It's these small things that really make a big difference. Nobody wants to be stuck with too many cigarette plugs and not enough hellers. If you've watched my Hilux build series, you'll know that I've already had National Lunar Lights in my canopy from the very start of the build. And these are very, very similar, sort of um, similar design, similar LEDs, all of that. Except for two things. Number one, these are clip-on, so I can clip them onto um, tent poles or I can clip them onto uh, the awning poles or anything like that. And number two, they are made to be more portable. So with uh, this fitting right over here, which is a 12, uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter slash Hela plug, if I remove the red part, it becomes a Hela plug. Or with this adapter, I can just connect it directly to a battery, but obviously I'm not gonna do that. But um, these will stay in the back. And if I need to, for example, cook and need a light from above uh, on the awning, then I will clip this onto the awning and, and use it like that. And hopefully I'll be able to permanently fit this to the awning. Not sure if that really is an option, um, but if I can do that, I'd love to give it a bash because yeah, it just makes life much easier. Navigation is extremely important and the key words here are preparation and redundancy. We'll be relying heavily on the Gaia GPS app and offline digital maps for this trip, but I've bought maps and guides from Tracks for Africa to help teach us about all the places that we'll be passing through. The backseat pouches provide a really good place to store things that you may need to access quickly like fire extinguishers and maps and of course a comprehensive first aid kit. You never really know when you may need it. And now all we can do is basically wait for the easy on stuff to arrive so we can turn my bald hallux into something beautiful. We've got ways to pass the time. So day two of our preparation and uh, today we're fitting the easy on stuff. So we pulled in at LA Sport. I'm gonna drop my, my truck off here. I don't quite have the muscle power at home to lift all that heavy stuff onto the roof and, and I don't quite have the experience to fit it quickly and, and smoothly. So I'll let these guys do it, they're the expert and we'll come pick it up a little bit later and, and see how she, how she looks. But really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good uh, experience to make those changes, I think. And uh, I think we're in for a more comfortable sleeping situation over the next two weeks. Easy On has such a solid reputation in the 4x4 and camping industry, having been around for 40 years and having pioneered many of the products in use today. So I was very excited to see this stuff leave their boxes and get fitted to my roof. And I was not disappointed. Well guys, finally I can reveal to you what I've been waiting for for such a long time. A proper hard shell rooftop tent. Uh, made by Easy On. This is the Easy On Blade, which is just going to make life so much easier for us. And we've even just replaced our front runner roof racks with the Easy On K9 rack, which I have to say straight away I, I like this more. It feels a little bit more solid. Um, they, I know for a fact that these give a little bit less wind noise. Not that it matters when you've got a ton of stuff strapped to the roof anyway, but look look really well well built. And then we've got an Easy On 270 Batwing awning as well, which is just a little bit lighter and smaller uh, than the other one I had on. So I'm, I'm very, very keen to see how, how this works out. But it should rattle a lot less um, on the vehicle when, when we're going over bumps and stuff, just because it's a little bit lighter and the mounts look a bit more solid. But yeah, let's pop this up. Let's see how it looks. And um, let's climb inside the tent for the very first time. It took me a little while to figure out the minor differences between the Batwing 270 awning and my previous Quick Pitch. The two products had slightly different ways of doing things, but by and large, the concepts are pretty much the same, and so it was quite a fast learning curve. Well, first impressions is that it works really well, and honestly, like I don't really feel the size difference between this and the, the previous awning. Um, these legs seem, seem really well built and really solid. And I like the way that these uh, these legs actually clip in here as well. So it seems like a really good design. Obviously, I'll have to use it a lot more to to learn a bit more about how it works and how it feels. But I'm very happy so far. It feels solid, and I feel like I'm not giving up any size over the previous one, which was big. <laughs> so yeah, super happy. But let's pop this tent open, shall we? And here's what makes this setup uh, so great for for long trips like this where you you don't want to really arrive at camp and take 
uh, 20 minutes setting up a tent or even 10 minutes feels like a long time. This gets uh, opened up like that. And then it's a simple case of lifting this up. Pops up. Bring this down here. And there you go. That's the tent. That's so cool. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, they're not playing games. This is a proper, proper ladder. This was my very first time setting up a hard shell tent and my first time with an easy on ladder and it did take me an unusually long time to figure out how the ladder worked. Maybe this was just fatigue, but this is one of those things that you get used to very quickly. And as you'll see on the upcoming series, I quickly mastered this process. Cool, so I figured out the, the ladder, how to put it up and everything. Tent, awning, everything is out. Uh, looks really good. I see that they also sent a, uh, a cable and it looks like this actually connects into the tent. So if you come around with me to this side, the front of the tent over here, there's actually a little hella plug input there. So we'll run a cable into the tent and we should have power points in the tent and a light, which is just awesome. Here's a first look from inside the tent. Plenty of space. There's your light up there, which you can just switch on and off. So that's great. And a really nice sort of fancy texture on the roof, bit of insulation. There's a insulation underneath the mattress as well, the form of a carpet. So in terms of sort of protecting from the elements, I think we're gonna stay pretty toasty in here, uh, in the, in, especially in the winter. And yeah, uh, have electric blanket plugged in as well. So it'll be very, very toasty. And if it rains and stuff, we then don't have to Try to, try to fold up a, a sopping wet uh, uh, soft rooftop tent. This just flops straight down, so that's awesome. But anyway, I think let's try get some bedding in here, get everything sorted up here, and there's a few more things we need to pack, and then we're ready to go. Okay, well, we have to figure out how we're gonna use the space on the lovely solid canine roof racks and I was a little bit concerned at first that this tent would actually overhang too much and that I wouldn't have a lot of space but there's plenty of space you probably have 90% of usable space so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the that uh, canvas bag that holds the ammo boxes full of wood probably right over here and then right in the front I'll put those two recovery tracks so we should mount up some of these brackets looks like these are the normal sort of standard eight millimeter slots so that's nice and universal should be pretty quick to get this up that looks good and then these guys should be able to sit right yeah like or we could do the other way around but I kind of like having the recovery tracks right in the front. The other question is what to do with that space on the roof rack in the front of the rooftop tent. And I've got a plan for this. Um, stuff like wood and extra water and stuff, it's heavy and generally you want it pretty low in the vehicle. But it also takes up a lot of space and it's the kind of thing that you don't need to access on a, re uh, on a regular basis. So what we're going to do with the wood and the water is we're going to store it in uh, ammo boxes like this well the wood and some charcoal and ammo boxes and some extra water for showering and stuff in a in a um, water water tank and we're going to put it in this thing which is actually made for three ammo boxes but just happens to fit this perfectly i've used this before it works amazing so we're going to stick with the trial and test it we are not expecting much rain on this trip, especially in Namibia, but this bag happens to be pretty well weather sealed with thick canvas and velcro all around the zip. We'll be tying this thing down with ratchet straps fastened to these tie down points and 
These can be bought from any hardware store. They are just stainless steel rings with 8mm bolts on the other end. Here's another part straight from the hardware store and it's all we need to hold the recovery tracks in place. Modularity is a beautiful thing. And I think this looks pretty darn good. The real test though is what my wife thinks. Got a, a thing inside there, a nice mattress. Yeah. This is really nice. Yo, I love this. Look at all the space. Let's test it out. This will work. This will be good. It'll definitely work. <laughs> it's nice, right? This is really nice. That's a nice pocket And it space. only takes like 10 seconds to fit up. I do like this. The uh, ladder will take a little bit of time to set up, but I actually love it. it's you not too bad, actually. I this view of you as well. How is it putting in the... Um, it's easy, it's much easier than the other tent. Okay. And the nice okay. thing is we don't have to put them up because... Is it just the two of them? Just the two. That's and nice. and that's, there's like a kind of a rod in the middle there. And there's an elastic around the outside here. So we can actually, if we don't want to pop it up, we just put the elastic around the outside to stop it from flapping. And we're all sorted. I do like this. It's very nice. So let's put the, I'll set this inside. That's good, that's good, that's good. I love the lights inside already. How does this connect up? Uh, there's a cable that we have to run through, but okay. it's pretty quick. It plugs into the outside. Okay, I like this. This is very nice. Do you want to get some bedding on you, Salam? Yes, let's do it. With the wife test passed, Nicole gets to work packing the bedding inside the tent, and I'll continue with my packing mission. This camp cover storage unit should come in very useful for holding toiletries and other small items, and I fix it inside the cab using cable ties. We have quite a lot of space actually right here in the back. We've obviously removed the back seats. Just bought this little camp cover thing yesterday to put little bits of, you know, like toiletries and stuff that you need on a regular basis in here. Um, and then we're going to put most of our clothes and stuff like that here. Obviously, we don't want to put anything that's too heavy like wood and all of that that, you know, if, if there were to be an accident that would fly into us. And if we do put anything heavy down, we've got some tie down points we can tie it down. But I think... Um, this is mostly going to be for clothes and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll get some clothes, get some bags, get some cameras, which obviously, you know, if we run into a shop, we want to lock stuff in the, in the cab. Cameras will be down here and we ru we're running a charging cable to the back here as well. So every, all the cameras that we plug in here will charge while we drive too. So let's get that stuff, shall we? Water will be extremely important on this trip as we'll be going through some extremely hot and dry places. My 40 litre water tank needs to be filled and that's another pretty quick and easy process. Food is always an interesting one when you're crossing borders and in the case of Namibia, we aren't allowed to bring any meat uh, across the border. So the fridge is not gonna be completely full and the freezer is basically gonna be empty. Normally what we do on a long trip is stack up on tons of, of meat and kind of put it in the freezer and let it freeze and just defrost it as days go on. But the day after tomorrow when we enter Namibia, we're going to go straight to the nearest shop and try to get some meat and do most of that stocking up. So the freezer is pretty much empty. The fridge we've stocked up with stuff like, you know, some mushrooms, some cheese, some uh, butter, some beers, some uh drinking yogurt which is just really uh perfect for uh, snacks on the road especially when you're driving like 10 hour days and you don't really want to stop and cook anything so we're going to get all this into the my brand new national lunar fridge and pack everything in there and then we will get all the uh non-perishable foods in as well i was a little bit nervous about whether the 60 liter national lunar fridge would fit in the back here and whether the lid would open properly as the shape is a little bit different to my previous fridge and the volume is a little bit bigger but it turned out to be pretty close to perfect. National Luna is actually the only fridge manufacturer that is certified by the World Health Organization to carry medicine into the remote areas of the world and that says something about the reliability of these units. Reliability is the number one criteria that you should be looking at when buying a fridge for remote travel and I feel pretty confident about this one. And the very last piece of the puzzle is to carry out the drawers, which we'd packed inside the house and to slide them in place. 
the adventure begins early tomorrow morning and things are finally coming together. And I think that's everything. So, gonna get an early night tonight. Tomorrow morning we hit the road at 3 in the morning. So, yeah, long, long day of driving as well. Whew, nice to have everything done. It's probably about 3 p.m. now, so uh, yeah, we'll have a brilliant early supper, make sure the house is clean, and then get going and hopefully have a good day tomorrow on the road. Awesome stuff. You'll see the series soon. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll catch you then. Thanks for watching.